Uh, I'm Sandy Mooney, and I'm the Vice President for Financial Operations at Houston Baptist University. This is such an exciting time for HBU, um, and we're taking another important step in carrying out our master plan and our vision in, of fulfilling the vision of the Ten Pillars. The construction of Beelan Road and Beelan Tower is a milestone for us, not just the first step in redeveloping our Campus Edge shopping center, but more importantly, in connecting our campus to the world that passes by every day on US 59. This is going to create a new front door for HBU. Dr. Sloan is gonna to speak to that a little bit more uh, in, in a few minutes. We have a lot of special guests present today, and so I wanna thank each one of you for coming and like to recognize some of the local community leaders who are in attendance. From the Sharpstown Management District, I'm gonna, as I call you out, I'm just gonna ask you to kind of wave and I'm gonna ask us to hold our applause till the end. From the Sharpstown Management District Board of Directors, Mr. Kenneth Lee, the Chairman of the Board, and an alumnus, an alumnus of HBU, if he's here. Steve Moore, a board member. Peter Aquaro, board member. Alice Lee, Director of Marketing and an alumnus of HBU. From Southwest Houston 2000, Mike Burku, an officer. I know I saw him earlier. From the City of Houston, representing Mayor Anise Parker, Veronica Hernandez, Community Liaison. She's back in the back. Representing TERS 20, Kevin Chavez, board member. We also have a large group from the Sharpstown Civic Association. Uh, Jim Bigham, the president. And I think there's a pretty large group, so the other officers and any other members that are here, if you'll wave your hand as well. In addition, we have Greg Wythe here from repre uh, representing State Representative Gene Wu's office. Or we think we do. Uh, now at this time, I'd like to recognize Rachel David, the Deputy Regional Director for United States Senator John Cornyn, who will share a message from, uh, a special message from Senator Cornyn. Rachel's also an alumnus of HBU, so we're very proud to have her back. So unfortunately, Senator Cornyn couldn't be here today, but as an alumna and also a member of the Alumni Association Board of Directors, I am very happy to be here. Um, Senator Cornyn sends his, his greetings and he says, Dear friends, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on the groundbreaking of Beelan Drive and Beelan Tower. I commend those whose dedication and vision made the construction of this tribute to Dr. Bruce and Mary Ann Beelan and their service to Houston Baptist University possible. Dr. Beelan was a respected leader in the Houston community, and he and Mary Ann have been instrumental in the growth of this university. Their efforts continue to provide educational opportunities for students that will equip them uh, to be the future leaders of our state and our nation. I applaud your commitment to education, and I am confident that HBU will continue to thrive as you prepare for future growth. I send my best wishes for a successful event and for the years ahead. Sincerely, Senator John Cornyn. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize our project team. And again, please hold your applause until I've finished all the introductions. We have an awful lot of hours that have gone into this and a great team that has been working on it so far. Um, from Houston Baptist University, Corky Dragoo, Assistant Vice President for Asset Development. I saw Corky somewhere. There he is. Thank you. From Brailsford and Dunleavy, our project managers, Peter Isaac. From PGAL Architects, uh, President Jeff Gerber and Alec Long. Sykes Engineering, Lonnie Sykes. Did I see Lonnie here? Ah. <laughs> and uh, Andy Sykes and Brian Malkey. From Braeburn Construction, President and Owner Tim Pixley. Vice President, I'm gonna try and say this right, Eddie Haikula, did I get that right? Close, okay. 
um, Jody Pepitone, Doug Outler, Dustin Carr, who's our project manager, and Jake Brown, the superintendent. I'm not sure if some of these folks are here or not, but from Rogers Moore Engineers, Kyle Von Felt and Elaine Rogers, and from Clark Condon Landscape Architects, Sheila Condon and Elizabeth Gilbert. One other person from our team that I want to recognize, uh, uh, Clay Trozo from Property Commerce. He's, they're our retail partners in redeveloping the uh, shopping center. Let's have a... Now I'd like to ask Dr. Robert Sloan, president of Houston Baptist University, to come forward and make some additional introductions and some comments. Sandy, thank you so much. It's uh, good to be here. Thank you so much for being here. And I am glad that we're indoors. Uh, we, we just had no idea when the rain might break out again. So, but this is a great turnout. And we've got folks in the balcony. You know, we can really say what a packed house we had here. So this is, this is so wonderful. Thanks for coming. Um, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, introduce, of course, Mary Ann Beelan and, uh, and the family members who are able to be with her today. All of you know Mary Ann and her family, but nonetheless, I, I want to start off by recognizing Mary Ann. We're honoring uh, Bruce and Mary Ann today. Bruce went to be with the Lord a couple of years ago, and uh, he has sorely missed. Uh, the influence of, of Bruce and Mary Ann in the life of Houston Baptist University is enormous. You really uh, can't uh, fully and adequately describe it and give expression to it. I'm, I'm not the most qualified to, to talk about uh, Bruce and his influence, but I do have, even in my uh, short uh, going on eight years here, have uh, some wonderful stories uh, and experiences with Bruce, and I'll, I'll mention a couple of those. But I want to introduce uh, Mary Ann. Mary Ann, uh, would you um, stand for just a second? And then we have some family members who are here as well. Lori is here, daughter Lori is here, and then uh, Chad is here, uh, Courtney, and uh, Dr. Lee is here, Malman is here. So thank you family members for being here. Now did Brad, I know Brad was on his way, did he make it? Brad's here, where's Brad? There you are, and Brad uh, Durkin is here. Good to see you Brad, thanks for coming. Did I miss any family members? Uh, uh, Jalee Clem is like a family member, so I want to, uh, Mary Ann said I have to recognize Jalee as well, so uh, Jalee Clem is here. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I want to take a moment just to introduce uh, the Houston Baptist University uh, trustees who are here. As you know, we have uh, men and women uh, always up to 36 in number who uh, are the directors of the university. They play such an enormous role. They have really an, an underappreciated and unsung role in the life of the university. And I'll, I'll mention that uh, in just a minute when I talk about Bruce. But I want to recognize the trustees who are here. Uh, I see, of course, David Brooks who is here. Uh, Hunter Rowe is here. And then I know Mark Dennison is here. Where's Mark? Behind me. Thank you. Mark Dennison, Chairman of the Board. Ray Cox is here. Um, Mark Rylander is here. Keith Jacobson uh, is here. Other trustees that I've missed, of course, uh, Stuart Morris is a trustee emeritus. Uh, and uh, Mary Ann is also a trustee emeritus, uh, emerita. You have to get your Latin right. You, alumna, you got it right, Rachel. I'm very proud of you. Uh, and uh, so uh, Mary Ann is, is also a, a trustee emerita. Any other trustees who are here that we have, have missed out on? Okay, well, would you give uh, an expression of appreciation to these? <laughs> and then they've been mentioned, but I also, I won't be able to call all the names, I don't think, but uh, uh, the alumni uh, board of directors, we have several members of, of our alumni board of directors who are here, and I, I want you, would you please lift your hand and let all of us uh, see you, Rachel, others who are around, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thinking of trustees, I, I will always uh, remember uh, Bruce. There are any number of things. Really, Bruce was not on the list of 25 or 26 who originally signed as the official founders of the university, but the truth is Bruce Bielan really was one of the de facto founders of the university. Stuart Morris, uh, early on, and uh, Dr. Morris has told me this many times, and uh, Stuart uh, and uh, Bruce told me as well, though Bruce always said it in a different way, yeah, Stuart always dragging me into something. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Dr. Morris told me that uh, he brought, uh, that Bruce got involved very early in the life of the university, everything from building buildings. Well, of course, uh, apparently uh, the way Bruce told me the story on one occasion was that he got this phone call. It's always started with a phone call from Stuart. Uh, and uh, one phone call was, uh, well, you know, we've got this uh, land out there, yeah. Uh, we, we're going to have a college, yeah. Well, we need a building, yeah. Well, uh, can you build that building? Uh, well, when do you need it? Well, the president's going to be there in about a week. Uh, can, you get, <laughs> can you get it done? Something like that. So anyway, the very first building, which no longer stands, but that first building, uh, was was built uh, by Bruce Building uh, Bruce Bieland. It was the it was the uh, just the the be all and end all building. It was the it was the everything building to start with uh, administration, of course, and every other function that the university carried on. That was built by Bruce Bieland. I've heard stories uh, told. I, I've heard uh, Dean Doris Warren tell the story of how uh, so many um, were uh, on a work day. Uh, planted crepe myrtles, and those crepe myrtles are still lying the uh, sidewalks and, and uh, other uh, spaces around the university. Well, there's a backstory to that, too. I don't know the, the, you know, I'll get the details wrong, but you'll get the essence of it. it you know, Bruce told me, well, his phone rang, and he picked up the phone. It was Stuart Morris. Uh, hello, Bruce. Hello, Stuart. Um, don't you think it'd be good if we had some trees on the campus? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, um, what, do, what do you think about crepe myrtles? Okay, that'd be fine. Well, I've got somebody who's going to give us about, what's the number? 25,000 uh, crepe myrtles. And we can, you know, whatever the number, put them all around campus. Okay, that's good. Um, well, we need somebody to dig the holes and help us plant them that has some machinery. Okay. Well, uh, what, when do you want it done? Well, they delivered them yesterday. <laughs> so that, uh, that's close to the story. I'm sure I've got the details wrong, but you get the feel for how, uh, how uh, Stuart brought uh, Bruce Beelan and the entire Beelan family really into the life of HBU. The, the president's house uh, where we have the privilege of, of living, it's such a beautiful house when students and faculty come over. Every year it happens when you have new students who come to the house, clubs and organizations they will always say what a beautiful house this is and and we are the first thing we always say is that yes it's the university's house we love living here it's so big and beautiful and and well cared for and then we always say you know bruce Beelan uh, built this house um, and uh, that's again i don't know the full backstory to that but i'm sure Stuart had something to do with getting bruce uh, involved but Really, nothing by compulsion uh, with Bruce. Uh, Bruce and Mary Ann have been involved throughout uh, the city of Houston and other outlying uh, counties and cities uh, for many, many years in entrepreneurial projects, in developments, uh, developments that also had golf courses. But every place uh, they had a development, they always set aside land uh, for churches to be built uh, as, uh, as, as their Christian witness and churches have been built all over uh, the, the surrounding area and in the city of Houston because of land that they set apart as part of these developments uh, that they had. And uh, Mary Ann, uh, as probably many of you know, served on the uh, staff uh, of Second Baptist Church for a while and she was very much involved in, in ministry with uh, children, young people. And uh, their, their life of commitment to Christ uh, is reflected uh, of course, in their own experience as a family, in their witness, in their, in their business, the way they have treated their employees and, and the things that they have done in, in building churches, in Mary Ann's ministry, and, and of course, in the generosity that we have experienced as a university. We couldn't be the university that we are today were it not for a great family like Bruce and Mary Ann Beelan. We just wouldn't be there. Uh, we, uh, and, and, and it's, as I said that, uh, Stuart Morris was nodding uh, his head yes. Um, the, families like these uh, change things. Uh, you know, life, uh, life 
life is not just uh, a, uh, either a, it's not a predetermined, um, you know, unraveling of what, of what is uh, just going to be. People make a difference. God in his providence uses people who have commitments and convictions and make decisions and make a difference. And Bruce Beelan, Mary Ann Beelan, uh, they have, have had deep Christian convictions. They've made serious sacrificial commitments uh, and they, uh, they have made a difference in the city of Houston, in the lives of people for the gospel, and of course, uh, in the life of this university. The one comment I wanted to, the last comment I want to mention, one of my own memories of Bruce, there were so many, uh, my, my, cl my first acquaintances um, in dealing with uh, HBU uh, in 2006, it was uh, March of uh, 2006, and uh, they had a search committee, um, and uh, Diane Williams was the chair of that search committee, and the first contact I had, um, uh, Mark Dennison had been delegated to, to make, uh, for various reasons, to, to reach out and make some contacts. And so Mark made a contact with me, and then I eventually came and uh, met the committee. And, and uh, through a, a process of, of, um, of uh, realizing the Lord's will, Sue and I uh, were realized, you know, we, maybe we really should prayerfully consider this. And so we were, we were in the throes of that decision. And without going into the details of, of why this meant so much to me, I, I will never forget after one of the meetings and meeting with the committee, Ray Cox was on that committee uh, as well and, and others, but Bruce uh, was on the committee, Carl Kennard was. But at the close of one of the meetings, uh, of conversations with, the, with that committee, and it was out in the construction uh, trailer, which was next to the Morris, while the Morris Cultural Arts Center was being built. One quick aside, Bruce Beelan and, uh, was deeply involved along with Stanley Williams in building the Morris Cultural Arts Center, I should add, uh, in providing for the uh, Marianne Beelan uh, Simulation Lab in the School of Nursing, uh, and um, in, um, with Stanley uh, before Bruce passed away. Bruce was involved in the project to, to <laughs> it was a long story here, to clean up uh, the, uh, the Brown Building uh, after Hurricane Ike. And we had to make sure that everybody understood we were just cleaning it up uh, for various reasons. But Bruce passed away uh, in those days while he was still involved in, in service with HBU. Well, back to the end of that meeting, uh, we were getting up and uh, Bruce uh, looked at me and in so many words said, said this, there's more to the story, but he said, the Board of Trustees of Houston Baptist University will support you and a great vision for the school. And uh, that, that uh, you know, the switch was beginning to flip then for me when, I, when somebody like Bruce looked at me and spoke of that kind of support. And that's what uh, we have found here. The trustees, the faculty, uh, the staff uh, in a great city like this uh, have provided enormous support and, and uh, entrepreneurship and, uh, and I, every time I think of that, I think of another quote from Bruce. Uh, Bruce talked about Houston and its entrepreneurial spirit and the can-do attitude. And that's the personality that we found uh, at HBU in this great city. So I'm sorry I've gone on too long. We, we have an exciting uh, vision for the future, but today this is not the dedication of all of this, uh, so to speak, but it's the groundbreaking. It's really the beginning of so many things. We, we will uh, name, uh, you know, Beeland Drive, uh, which is uh, over there, uh, and it will come right off of 59 into the campus. Uh, what used to be the road to nowhere will never again be called the road to nowhere. It is the Beeland Drive. And uh, then a great... Uh, It's, it's, the, it's the drive that will bring us right into the heart of campus. There'll be a beautiful roundabout. In the middle of that roundabout will be, hey, where's the picture? Oh, well, here, let me have that mark if I could. I'm gonna, oh, there, thank you, Jody. I'll, I'll, I'm going to present this to Marianne a little bit later, but there's the, when you see that picture, uh, Beeland Drive will lead right into that, to a roundabout, which will then connect with the rest of the campus, and uh, we, we, we will build that uh, tower, and it will be Beelan Tower, and it will be uh, in, in tribute uh, to, of course, to, to Bruce Beelan. And uh, it's because of, of Mary Ann's very generous gift uh, that we're able uh, to do this. So, uh, and it, it's beyond building that tower, it's infrastructure, 
It's amazing, you know, folk don't necessarily like to give to infrastructure, but Bruce and Mary Ann understood the importance of roads and entryways. Bruce always loved a grand and beautiful entryway to any of the projects that, uh, that they built. So uh, there'll be a grand entryway off of 59. Uh, it'll, the road will then be completed uh, into this roundabout and Belen Tower and Plaza will then be built. And then the road, uh, they've also, the, the gift also helps us connect uh, with other roads and provide other infrastructure uh, for, for this entire development. This really is the beginning point uh, of this fabulous uh, development that we think will change the, the image of, um, of the university to the outside world. If you can see 59 uh, right there, between 250 and 300,000 cars per day travel up and down 59, and they don't see us because we're hidden uh, by the shopping center, which has helped us down in, in decades past, but, but now it's, of course, outmoded, but that shopping center will be beautifully redone. It will look like the campus architecture. When people drive by on 59, they're going to look over there and say, that's HBU, they're gonna, because it's going to look like us. It'll have retail shops, an arena, a hotel and conference center, an office building, parking garage, uh, and other things. So it's, it's a very exciting day. This is the beginning uh, of, of, this, of this development, the groundbreaking for the entire enterprise. So uh, and later on, I'll present this, uh, I'll give this to Marianne. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much, Marianne. Uh, God bless you. Uh, we give the Lord thanks for Bruce and for you. And we, we, are, we are enormously thankful to you and your whole family. God bless you. Mark Dennison. It was about 20 years ago when I first came on the Board of Trustees and Bruce Beelan was our chairman. When we had our next gala, our Spirit of Excellence gala, my wife was there with me. And after we'd walked in, we're meeting a few people, talking to some folks. Bruce came over and my wife had no idea who he was, but was so impressed with him as a gentleman. And after we sat down during the dinner, she asked me, who was that nice looking man? that was such an incredible gentleman. We talked about him, and I said, you know, I want to look that good when I'm his age. And she said, you don't look that good now. What are you talking about? <laughs> but the thing about Bruce that night that impressed her and that impressed me every day I was around him was that he was such a gentleman. He had such a heart for people, and it didn't matter what you brought to the table. He loved everybody the same. It's absolutely stunning how much he made me feel a part of the board when I first came into the room for the very first time. Jesus said, they will know that you're my followers, not by how smart you are, by how much money you can give, or by how talented you are, but because you love one another. In Jesus' Lord's prayer, his real prayer in John 17, the theme of the prayer was that the body of Christ be brought together. Bruce brought people together. He offered me free golf anytime I wanted to play. One time I played and I think they told him that I left the course in worse shape than I found it. And so he recommended lessons for me and he offered to pay for them. Um, he was just an incredible guy and seemed to know a little bit about everything. It was such an honor to serve with him on our board and also on the presidential selection committee. Such a gentleman, always bringing people together, loved the Lord Jesus Christ, loved his wife, his family so very much. We learned more by the way he lived his life than we did even by the things that he said. He is greatly missed, but his legacy will continue on, and for that we're so very, very grateful. I'd like to ask my friend Ray Cox, who has also served on the board with Bruce Beelan for many years, has chaired our board, and is currently the chairman of our properties committee to come and share with us at this time. Ray, would you come? Thank you, Mark. And it's really an honor to be here and to be able to say a few words uh, on behalf of the property committee. And I too have a, a personal story and it, it goes back a ways. Uh, I happened to grow up in the small community of Galena Park, which is on the east side of town. And uh, our, our neighborhood had a sort of a companion neighborhood of Jacinta City. 
And within Jacinto City, there was a small community called Jacinto Oaks. Well, the main street in Jacinto Oaks is Beeland Street. And when, uh, I can't tell you the number of times I drove up and down Beeland Street when I was growing up. And when I was asked to speak today, I, I thought about all the, the great times and the, and the great experiences, the, the, uh, uh, the joy that I had growing up and how they were connected with that street growing up. Didn't know Bruce at the time, uh, didn't know that he had actually developed uh, Jacinta Oaks, uh, but uh, it, it truly was a, a special time and a special uh, memory for me. So when I came on the board years later, I had the chance to ask Bruce about that. When I asked him about it, his eyes lit up uh, and he said, yeah, that was my very first development. And you could tell it meant a whole lot to, to Bruce. Uh, and during the course of that time, I had the, the, the uh, privilege to kind of be in Bruce's shadow on, on several committees and, and learn from him. And truly, he, he was a mentor to me. I, 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 I really have to say that um, I, I was truly in awe of the way that he was able to accomplish so much with such a, a strong, uh, quiet dignity. I mean, that was kind of the way I viewed Bruce. He, he got things done, uh, but he did it in such a, a quiet, uh, with a quiet strength, uh, and, and I truly admired him for that. So here we are today being able to uh, break ground on uh, Beeland Drive in sort of the same way that I'm able to look back on such great experiences growing up, driving down Beeland Street, you know, I really have uh, the confidence of, of knowing that so many students are going to have that same, same opportunity to be able to look back one day and think of all the learning experiences and life experiences that they had that are connected to turning on to Beeland Drive and what was once the road to nowhere is, is actually, it will take on a, a much uh, more significant meaning to many people. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you on, on behalf of the property committee and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Sloan. Well, I'd like to ask Mary Ann if she would uh, come up here with me and I want to have uh, lead us uh, in a dedicatory prayer. But, uh... And then in just a second, I'm going to ask Chad, to, uh, Marianne has uh, designated Chad as her spokesperson today, so uh, he's, he's going to get to say thank you. She said that uh, if I call on her to pray, she's going to cry, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to lead in the prayer. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege that we have today of remembering Bruce and his witness, his commitment to you, his commitment to Christ, his commitment to his church and his family and his commitment to all of us at HBU. Thank you for the difference that Bruce and Mary Ann have made in the lives of thousands in Houston and around the world because of their generosity and because of their witness. Lord, we, we hereby ask in the name of Christ, in the power of his spirit, that, that you it would bless the enterprise that we now undertake in the building of this road, in the building of the entryway, in the building of the tower, in the building of the development that will follow. We pray for safety and protection for, for all who work here. We pray for the witness of Christ upon all those who see and participate. And we pray, Father, that this road that we now dedicate in the tower and the plaza in the memory of Bruce with gratitude to for Bruce and to Mary Ann we pray that this road would be just like the road that leads to Christ, that he is the way unto true life and that no one comes to the Father except through him. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask for your blessing as we offer to you in love and memory with gratitude for the life of Bruce and Mary Ann. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, no, all I was going to say is, uh, you know, one thing I can always remember since I was yay big was, was just my grandparents. One thing that was always on their heart was just the, to have a Christian influence, a Christian institution in the Houston area. And that was one thing that was 
always near and dear to them, and I, I can always remember that. You know, I, I've had the opportunity to work with my grandfather in the business, so he always repeated that to me. Um, and so that was one thing that I, I really thought that was really impressed about that with both of my grandparents. But the one thing that I always heard my grandfather say was that that really bothered him, and I remember him hearing lots of stories with Mr. Morris and, and kind of what, you, you know, just echoing the same thing that you said, lots of crazy stories and crazy timelines, and, he, and he, they got it done uh, because they, they both shared a vision and wanted to get that accomplished. But the one thing that I know that he always, I always heard him and he always wanted to, to get accomplished was a main entrance into the university. There really wasn't one. And, uh, you know, he said, how do you have prospective students and people coming to the university and they don't really know where to go. So that's one thing he really wanted to get accomplished. And I'm proud that my grandmother is seeing that through. Uh, you know, unfortunately, my grandfather couldn't see that, but I'm glad that my grandmother is seeing that through. And I think it's going to be something that'll be great for, for all future students and hopefully get more people come to get to know Christ and all that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Morris, I want to be sure that we say thank you to you for bringing Bruce and Mary Ann into the founding family of HBU. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I think it's time we turn some dirt here. Uh, I know we've bound, we're bound to have a protocol for this. Uh, so uh, here are...